Hey everybody, it's Joe. Thank you for tuning in for part two of my multi-part series talking about the construction of Tesla's lithium refinery plant at Corpus Christi, Texas. Now in part one, we talked about the location, why Tesla chose that location, and some of the land purchases that Tesla acquired for this refinery. For part two, we're gonna be talking about the three large ponds that are on the site. And this is something that I saw right away when I started my drone flight uh, video. Now, before I get too far into this video, I wanna say thank you to some people that have been very helpful in preparing all of this information. These are my Patreons, Chris Keller, Desi Doolin, Harder NL, Patrick Kinney, Dennis Kelly, and Chris Drysdale. So thank you very much. Now, as you can see by the images behind me during my drone flight, these three ponds really stood out when I was flying around. In fact, they are the largest items so far on the construction site. And it really kind of made me wonder what exactly are these for? And I know a lot of viewers have asked me the same thing. And we'll get into what they might be and then we're gonna talk about what they actually are. And we're gonna use some of the uh, information that we got during the groundbreaking for Tesla to help figure this out as well. Now, if you can take a look at this image, you can see these three ponds are fairly large. The trapezoidal pond on the south end is about 9.01 acres or about 37,500 square meters. The largest pond on the north end is sort of triangular shape and it's about 14.85 acres or about 60,100 square meters. And the smaller triangular pond on that north end is about 3.19 acres or about 12,900 square meters. So these are actually fairly substantial ponds and it was very surprising for me when I did see them. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what ponds could be and how they're related to lithium manufacturing. And then we're gonna talk about how they are actually being used here at Tesla's refinery. It is a very different approach. When you think of lithium processing, brine ponds come to mind usually, and these are very large depressions in the ground. They have liners usually. It's a watery mixture with a variety of minerals. They use evaporation to help uh, increase the concentration of the lithium, and that is how it's pretty much uh, collected. Now, this is the most common industry methodology used in the lithium production industry today, and they do that because it's uh, got a lot of lower costs involved but there are a lot of environmental considerations as well. Some of those include seepage of the brine into the ground in the water table and also a very inefficient use of land. Here's a quick illustration of showing how inefficient the use of land is for brine ponds. This is Salar de Atacama in Chile. It's a large dry salt flat surrounded by mountains and it's one of the driest places on earth, which means it's perfect for the evaporation process for the brine tanks. However, these three uh, locations that you see on the screen here, I'll just show you one of them. It takes up 10,550 acres or 4,350 hectares for just one. And this is another set of uh, images kind of giving you an idea what the brine tanks or brine ponds look like and how this could be an environmental issue. Now that you have an idea what brine ponds are in association with lithium processing, let's talk about what Tesla is going to be using at this refinery. And it's a new and revolutionary process that uses spodumene concentrate instead of the brine ponds. Let's hear from Elon Musk and Drew Baglino during battery day of a description of the process. And then also Turno Caldwell, who's Tesla's lead for their battery raw materials and recycling program, during the official groundbreaking ceremony about the processes they intend to use at this refinery. Um, uh, but it, it is important to say like, okay, what is the smartest way to uh, take the ore and uh, extract the lithium and, and do so in an environmentally friendly way? Um, and we actually discovered a, again, looking at a sort of first principles physics standpoint, um, in, instead of just the way it's always been done, um, is we found that uh, we can actually use table salt, uh, sodium chloride, uh, to uh, basically ex extract the lithium from the ore. Um, and uh, th this is, nobody's done this before. I, to the best of my knowledge, nobody's done this. Um, and it's a, a, a sort of, you know, all the elements are reusable. It's a, a very sustainable way of, of obtaining lithium. <laughs> so Simply mix clay with salt, put it in water, salt comes out with the lithium, done. My name is Turner Caldwell. I lead our battery, raw material, and recycling efforts at, at Tesla. Um, 
So speaking to some of the innovation that we're going to be pursuing on site, the conventional process, and I won't get too into the weeds, um, but it's heavy. It's a heavy sulfuric acid consumer. It's a heavy sodium hydroxide consumer. And as a result, the byproducts that are produced from that conventional process are, are challenging to manage. You end up with a lot of sodium sulfate that no one really wants. Um, here, what we're going to be using are much more inert reagents. We'll be consuming soda ash, sodium carbonate, very common industrial chemical. We'll be consuming lime, again, very industrial, very common industrial chemical. Um, and it's a much more direct route that consumes 20% less energy all in. It consumes uh, reagents that are 60% less cost, uh, costly. Um, and, uh, and all in, the, the production cost is around 30% lower uh, on a unit, unit cost basis. Um, but the, the real key thing here is that the byproduct that's produced is, is much more inert. It's basically a mix of, of sand and limestone. Um, and the team here has been working really hard on finding beneficial use opportunities for that, that sand and limestone uh, to try to feed that into construction materials uh, so that we end up as a, as a, as a net environmentally uh, very neutral site. Now that we understand that Tesla's process for lithium refinery here will not rely on brine ponds, let's return to the site and take a look at the existing ponds and try to figure out what they're used for. Now you'll note that none of the ponds have liners installed and there are water wells that are pumping water deep underground into these catch basins. You also note that the pond on the south end also does not have a liner and that these ponds are located on the north and south end of the site. Now there's also ports and pipes for water trucks to be able to get water and transport it around the site. And in fact, that they've been using that quite extensively, uh, partially for dust mitigation. And you can see also that they use it for some of the construction material processing for the soil strengthening, as you can see in this particular image. Uh, here you can also see near to the structure where water trucks have uh, sprayed the water, all of which is coming from these ponds. And uh, another key aspect of these water ponds and the well system is that there are no city or rural water systems serving the site right now. So there's no other way for them to get water. Also, this entire area is very low lying and it's a very flat location. So if they get heavy rain, uh, the water has nowhere to go. So by having these ponds, it helps with that water mitigation. You'll also note here, there's a channel on the east side that connects the ponds or will be connecting the pond soon. And that will help with the water level management. Well, I hope you enjoyed the information that we discussed, uh, what we talked about with brine ponds, how they are used, what Tesla said about the processes that they are going to be employing here at the refinery plant and how what we are seeing on the site here with these large ponds is something very different. In fact, it's not related to the lithium processing at all. What we are seeing here is basically a water management system and also with the ongoing construction, they need a ready source of water for dust mitigation and also for some construction related items that we're gonna be talking about in part three. Thank you very much for watching I very much appreciate it. Part three is coming up very soon. Uh, look for that in the next couple of days. And again, thank you very much for your support. Take care.